video, we'll continue looking at chemical equations. We'll look at predicting the products and balancing the equations for combustion reactions. We'll look at equations where CO2 is produced by decomposition after a double replacement reaction. And then we'll look at net and complete ionic equations. All right, so we're doing, are looking at uh, predicting the products of combustion reactions here. So just to remind you, we've covered um, synthesis reactions, which is taking two or more chemicals, putting them together. You have to be able to classify those, but you don't have to predict the products of those. Okay? You have to be able to balance those equations have to be able to, in some cases, figure out the physical state. So you should know some of the basic gases, the elemental gases you need to know. Hydrogen's a gas, it's a diatomic gas. Oxygen, nitrogen, uh, chlorine, fluorine are all diatomic gases. Bromine is a diatomic liquid. Uh, all the noble gases that we use in here are all gases, but they're not diatomic. So neon is just Ne, it's never going to be Ne sub 2. Okay, um, insofar as liquids are concerned, well, you need to know about mercury being a liquid, okay? You need to know about, um, what did I just say? Bromine's a liquid. Um, water's a liquid. Uh, other than that, right now, you really don't have a lot of information about what's a liquid and what isn't. We'll get to some more of them a little later in the semester. Uh, as far as aqueous solutions are concerned, if there's water around, then you're going to use the solubility rules to determine if a substance is going to be uh, aqueous. And so that's symbolized AQ. Uh, liquids symbolized L. Uh, solids are uh, symbolized S. Um, although I've seen some textbooks that list them separately as certain types of amorphous solids are listed one way and crystal solids are listed another. So right now we're just going to use S. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, all the metals except for mercury are going to be listed as solids, okay, when you're doing single replacement reactions, all right, and uh, gases. You know about CO2 being a gas, you know about oxygen being a gas, so there are some basic gases you're supposed to know about. And there is one, we said for uh, double replacement reactions, there's three driving forces. Um, there's the formation of a of water, formation of a solid, or formation of a gas. And there's one reaction, one type of general class of reaction that will produce a gas that we need to talk about, okay? And I'll get to that after we do the combustion reactions, all right? But combustion reactions we've already done in here, and it turns out that this, this is one of those semesters where I cover combustion in a as a second unit because I want to be able to do uh, thermochemistry where we can do ice cream before it gets cold, this being a fall class. But uh, combustion we've done before, so you should pretty much be familiar with that, okay? Combustion reactions mean we're going to start with some kind of, at least in this class, at this level in high school, we're going to start with some kind of hydrocarbon fuel. And in the last unit, we learned how to name hydrocarbons. So now, you should have the skills to name them if necessary. If I give you a name, you should be able to write the formulas, okay? A hydrocarbon fuel. We're going to react that with atmospheric oxygen. And I, I specify atmospheric oxygen because there is oxygen in the form of O3, which is ozone, and there's elemental oxygen, or I'm sorry, atomic oxygen, which is rare, but you know could possibly exist, which is simply O. But atmospheric oxygen is O2. And then as a product, we're always going to get carbon dioxide, oops, carbon dioxide, Not cardun. I don't know why I was doing that. Carbon. So my B looks a little bit, you know, lumpy or sick or something, but it's a carbon. Carbon dioxide. And we're always going to get water. This is always a gas. I mean, it takes a lot to make it anything other than a gas. At room temperature and pressure, or atmospheric pressure is always a gas. Water, because of the heat produced in a hydrocarbon or combustion reaction, Water always comes out as a gas, so that's actually steam. Uh, atmospheric oxygen is a gas. And so the only thing you have to worry about in terms of physical states for a combustion reaction is this hydrocarbon fuel. Okay? So there's a lot to figuring out 
what physical state a hydrocarbon fuel is going to have. For this class, we're going to use some pretty simple numbers. Okay, We're going to say if the carbon chain is five carbons or less, that's a gas. Okay, Between five and 15, that's a liquid. 15 and over, we're going to, actually we should say it's less than that. We're going to choose 5 and 15 because it's kind of round numbers, okay? But we're going to say at over 15 or, yeah, 15 or above is going to be a solid, okay? So above 5 and up to 15, I'm sorry, up to 15 but not including 15, uh, that's going to be a liquid and 15 or above is a, is a solid, okay? Can you remember that? I see some of you writing it down. Good for you. All right, so the hydrocarbon fuel, uh, if we use a Molecular formula will be something like C with some subscript here and H with some subscript here, okay? Which And we don't know its physical state because you have to assign that as a physical state. Up to five carbons, that's A. Answer is gas. Above five and up to 14, that is liquid. And 15 or above, that is A. Solid, thank you. All right. So atmospheric oxygen is always O2, and it's always a gas. Carbon dioxide, CO2, and it's a gas. And water in combustion reactions, this is about the only time in this class where this happens that we always can say it's going to be a gas. If there's a lot of heat in any reaction, you can say it's going to be steam. But we're going to say it's a gas for sure with combustion reactions, okay? So when you crank up your car on a cold morning, what do you... Uh, what kind of fuel, hydrocarbon fuel, are you combusting? Really? You don't know what you put in your car to make it burn? To make it run? Gasoline. Well, what is gasoline mostly? Huh? It's a liquid. It's like oil has been refined, right? But do you know what uh, chemical formula it mostly is? It's mostly octane. That's where you get that octane rating. Okay, so when you go to the gasoline station and it says... Do you want 95 or what is it? 95, 97, 99. That's an octane rating, huh? Uh, okay, I know, I'm sorry. I, I just forgot the numbers, but that, those are, those numbers are octane ratings. Okay, so it's mostly octane. Okay, not not that it's actually mostly octane anymore, but at one time it was mostly octane. So it's E85. Well, E85 means it's 85% uh, um, gasoline and 15% ethanol. That's a whole different thing. Not good for your car, Cars now are manufactured for E85 um, gasoline. Actually, it should clean the, the, the it, it does a better job of cleaning the combustion areas of your engine. It's a lot of well, uh, that's not, the, the only thing that E85 does, they say, is it, causes the seals to wear out faster, but I'm not sure that's the case anymore because things have been changed to accommodate that, okay? All right. Anyway, I'm not an expert in that, you know? That's something that somebody else who, who really knows what they're talking about and not just, you know, shooting from the hip can tell you. A lot of people just shoot from the hip think they know. Um, be careful of that, all right? You should be a, a, a reasonable skeptic about almost everything because you're a young scientist now. All right. So uh, let's do, let's look at octane here. C8, and how many hydrogens do you put on there when you have eight carbons in a straight chain? How many hydrogens do you put on there if you have eight carbons in a straight chain? No, that's too many. Okay, how'd you figure 18? Two times eight is 16 plus two extras on the end. Good. Okay, and we said it's a liquid, right? Because it's between 6 and 15, right? Or between 5 and 15, not including 5 and 15. O2. All right? So now you can predict the products. How simple is that? Huh? Oh, it's, oh, 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 as far as, yeah, it's it's how close you get to the burning characteristics of octane. Pure, if you had pure octane, that's what the, that's what the rating is on the, on the gas, on the gas pump. 
Okay, that's what it's rated by. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what it's rated by. Yes. Okay. Come on. Just try to get used to it. Is it an eight or not? Eighteen and eight. Okay. okay. Yes. So how did you get the eight? Octane. What does OCT mean? Eight. eight carbons in a chain. All right. So how to get eighteen? Think about the chain. In your head, imagine. I, I mean, I okay. Octane. Right here. It's what gasoline is. Yes, gasoline is C and H. Yes. Okay, there's a little bit of oxygen in there, especially with E85. Okay, that's what we're talking about. All right. What product? Can you, can you write the products, guys? Write them down, please. Practice. Write the products. Okay? Write the products. Right now, write the products. And balance the equation. Write the products and balance the equation. All right, so here are the products of the reaction, CO2 and water. It's always that. It should be super simple, right? And we always have carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. And we need a grid. Count everything. Eight, 18, 2, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to start balancing the equation. Then we want to have eight carbons over here because we've got eight on the left, so that'll be a coefficient of eight here. That's going to change the number of carbons and oxygens on the right-hand side, and so we need to recount those. Uh, don't try to save pencil, uh, what people call lead, but it's really graphite, uh, by not writing things down. I would keep up with it. Just try to be careful because otherwise I've seen a lot of students make math mistakes, simple math mistakes, simply because they didn't write it down. So 8 times 2 is 16 plus the 1 here. So right now I've got 17 oxygens. All right, we're going to save oxygen and balance it last. Always save oxygen for last. Always save hydrogen for next to last. It just makes your life a whole lot easier when you do that. Since we have 18 hydrogens on the left, I need to have 18 on the right, so I need a prefix in, or a coefficient rather in front of the uh, species water here because it's the only one with the hydrogen on the right of 9. 9 times the 2 here will give me 18. That's going to change the number of hydrogens and oxygens. So we've got now 18 hydrogens, and the number of oxygens we have. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 9, that's 25. So now we have 25 oxygens. Now we've got that problem where we have an even number on the left and an odd number on the right. What's the easy solution to that? Going through, go through and multiply all the coefficients in front of all the chemical species by 2. And so we're gonna, these are going to change to... This will be 2. Now, we don't do that for oxygen because that's the one we're trying to balance. Just leave that alone for the moment. We change this to 16 and change this to 18. That's going to change the number of carbons, hydrogens. I didn't change this over here for some unknown reason. That was 16 now. No, it was 8. And now it's going to be 16. All right, 16. And... Uh, Let's see, hydrogens, 18 times 2, was it 36? And then oxygens, I've got 16 times 2 is 32, plus 18, uh, 50. Does that make sense? Is that right? Okay. And so now we can change the number of oxygens. If we have a coefficient of 25 here, 25 times 2 will give us 50 and everything's balanced. Where? Here? Because I need to have 50. Okay, when I changed 9 to 18, that meant I have 
16 times 2 here, that's 16 times 2 oxygens, that's 32 oxygens just for this species. What do you mean to the second part? Like when you change the numbers the first time. Like you had 8, 9, and 10, and 16. Okay. We, all right, at that point, um, we had eight, a coefficient of 8 and a coefficient of 9, and we had 25 oxygens. There's no number I can put in front of O2, not no whole number I can put, of o, put in front of O2, that will give me 25 oxygens. I mean, I can put 12 and a half, but we want whole numbers. Okay? Now, when we were doing combustion reactions, that was a time when we could use fractional numbers because we wanted to have just a number, uh, no coefficient, or the number coefficient 1 in front of this. But this is a different. Now we're at a point where we're trying to use only whole numbers. Okay? And so, in order to get uh, everything worked out, to have the same number of options on both sides, I needed to have an even number on the right. <coughs> Since I had an odd number, 25, the easy solution to that is to multiply everything by 2, and that will give you an even number of options. <coughs> and it keeps everything else balanced. And then all i got to do is go back over here and say, okay, well, what number do I put in front of O2 that's going to give me that 50? And that was 25. Okay? Any questions about that? Here? Here. 25 times 2 is 50. All right. <clears throat> Any questions about combustion reactions? We've done a lot of those already. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. You can balance combustion reactions. We've done that several times in here already. You've looked at, at combustion reactions before. You know in addition to these two chemical products, we're also making light and heat. Okay, that's what combustion is. It makes light and heat in addition to those products. Um, so we're not, basically you just need to know. It's really simple, guys. Combustion reactions. Hydrocarbon. Oxygen, you're going to make CO2 and water every time. All right? Shouldn't be hard. That's the easiest one to predict products for. Please don't forget. All right? All right. Now, one more kind of equation now that where you can have a product that is a gas. And it's the only one that actually produces a gas as a regular thing. Okay? All that, well, I mean, you can do single replacement reactions. You get hydrogen gas. But for those, you're looking at whether or not the metal's higher than the hydrogen is, and we've already gone through that. What we want to do is to find a chemical reaction that produces a gas, all right? And the only one we're worried about is the production of the only kind of reaction that produces a gas is when the product, the initial product of the reaction is H2CO3. If the initial product of the reaction is H2CO3, this is called carbonic acid. You should know that from the last unit where we learned to name acids, okay? We have a carbonate ion. When you have an acid with a polyatomic ion and it has it, that polyatomic ion has an ATE ending, then you drop the word, you name it first like an ionic compound, hydrogen carbonate. You drop the word hydrogen all together, change A to it, and that's carbonic acid. Okay? So that was what we did in the last unit. Learn the name of those. Well, carbonic acid is unstable. It's inherently unstable. And so what it does is it automatically decomposes. Okay? And it decomposes into H2O. Now, this is going to be a liquid. This is no heat here. Okay. And carbon dioxide. And what is carbon dioxide at normal atmospheric pressure? Gas. And there's your gas. So let's look at this reaction. Looking at these two products, what would you predict the kind of reaction would be? What classification does it fall into? We have five major classifications and one subclassification. Is it synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement? Double. 
Yeah, what, what kind of, what classification of reaction it is, is it? That's the first question. If you're going to figure out what the products are, you first have to classify it. And we've got single replacement, double replacement, um, synthesis, decomposition, and we have uh, combustion. And also, there is a sixth classification that comes under double replacement, acid base. So which classification or classifications does this fit under? Huh? Single replacement. Do we have any element by itself? No. Okay. Do we have, how would we figure out it, if it's going to be decomposition? One becoming more than one. Okay. It could be three even. Yeah. Okay. Is, it, is this one that could be going into three or two? Okay. What is synthesis? Two or more going into one. Is this, do you think this is going to combine and make one thing? I mean, it's possible, but I've never made you, I said, you're not going to have to predict the products of synthesis reactions. And you're not going to have to predict, be able to predict the products of, of uh, decomposition reactions. There are only three kinds of reactions for which you have to predict products. And what are those? And double single and combustion. Okay. So which one of those is this? Double. How do you know it's double? Yeah, you got two two-part compounds, okay? You've got sodium and a polytopic ion called carbonate. You've got hydrogen and chlorine or chloride. Two two-part compounds. If it's going to react, the first thing you're going to look at is whether it's going to be a double replacement reaction. So how do we predict the products of a double replacement reaction? What? Well, we will need solubility rules at some point, okay? But right now, what's the first step you do when you have a double replacement reaction? No. We just did this on Friday. What do you do? Okay, you got to switch the parts. Okay, that's all you got to do. You got to switch the parts. That's the first thing you do. So we take the NA and we put it with the CL. If it's going to be double replacement, this is the way it works. Now, we're not going to balance anything yet, so subscripts like this, too, don't travel. Okay? Unless it's part of a polyatomic ion, it doesn't travel. This 3, then, is part of a polyatomic ion. So what does it do? Huh? It travels. Okay? So I'm going to put the H with the CO3. Okay? Does that look like anything that might be a red flag? Might make sirens go off in your head? No, not yet? Huh? Yeah. Looks like an acid. What kind of acid might it be? Really? No. I just gave it to you. It's right here. It might, it might be carbonic acid. Let's balance it and see. What's the charge on a carbonate ion? Look it up. Take the time. Prepare yourself for the test. Look up the charge on carbonate, this CO3. If you have an, a compound with more than two elements, you're going to try and find and see if there is a polyatomic ion, and you use what for that? Negative two charge. Yeah, it is. What did you look for to get that? Polyatomic ion. Yeah, the common ions list, which lists all the polyatomic ions. So there's a two negative charge on the carbonate. What charge does the hydrogen have? One. It's always one plus. Okay, unless there's some re unless there's a reason to put it on the back end, it's always going to be one plus. So what do we need to do to balance this compound? What? Two in front of the H, or in this in this form, yes. And then down here, what does it become? Huh? Does it stay in front of it like that down here? What do you do down here? Subscript. Okay. Does that look like this? Does it look like that? That's a two negative right there. There's a two times H plus. Does this formula look like this formula? So what's going to happen then? Well, it will be a gas because it's going to decompose. Okay? All right. Anytime you make this product, 
you just have to know. You just have to memorize. Okay? It has to decompose. So these are, these are not really the products yet. Okay, the real products are... There's the real products because it decomposed. Now, what physical states do we assign to these? How do we find the physical state for this? Solubility rules. So what, what physical state is it going to have? If you're not practicing with your solubility rules, you're just preparing to fail the test, guys. Come on. Get out the solubility rules and look. Use it. It's soluble. And so what physical state do I assign? AQ. Okay. What physical state do I assign to this? Liquid, because I said so up here. And what physical state do you assign to CO2? Yes. Okay, now we're ready to balance the equation. Yeah. So you're going to do this first, because you wouldn't, I mean, you get further along and do this enough times, you'll begin to recognize it and won't have to do this step. But you, what you really need to do is write this first, and when you see this, the bells and whistles should be going off in your head, and you say, okay, i got to decompose that. Okay? And there's your driving force right there. Not only did you form water, but you also formed a gas. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so balance the equation. So this is the balanced equation, okay? Not hard to balance this one. Some of them are harder, all right? So we've covered everything in this unit that you need to know for the test. Okay, I can't think of anything. I'll make sure I go back over that and make sure I've covered it. But um, let's see. You've got to be able to classify equations. Five major classifications, okay? Single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, and, com and combustion. Under double replacement is the category of um, acid base. Now, this actually happens to be both double replacement and decomposition. Okay? You have both in this one equation because you have a double replacement and then this decomposes. So that's really one reaction followed by a second. Okay? That makes sense? Everybody clear with that? Huh? No, not a new term. Just decomposition and double replacement. Okay. Um, so that's the five classifications. You have to be able to classify a reaction to predict products because they, you have different kinds of products, different ways of thinking about how to get products based on the kind of reaction. If you have a single replacement reaction, the only driving force you're looking for is whether the part that's by itself, the element that's by itself, will displace the part in the compound that it's like. Metals are like other metals, or metals are, in this context anyway, like hydrogen in an acid. Halogens are like halogens. In a double replacement reaction, you have to predict the products or put the products together like this before you can figure out whether there's a driving force. Okay? In a double replacement reaction, you have to know whether you form a solid, a gas, or water. Those are the three driving forces in a double replacement reaction. If you don't have one of those three, you just write NR. If you don't have an element by itself in a single replacement reaction, displacing something in the compound it's like, that's no reaction. You just put right NR on the right-hand side. But for double replacement reactions, you have to actually write down the products before you can figure it out. Now, maybe you're good enough to figure it out just by saying, okay, if I put this with this, that's going to be aqueous. So I put this with this, that's going to be aqueous, and you can see right away, you know, I don't have any driving force. Oh, but wait a minute, that's going to decompose. So if you can't see that that's going to decompose without writing it, write it first and make sure. That makes sense? So it's always good for double replacement reactions to write the products first. And then for combustion reactions, it's always the same products, carbon dioxide and water. You can't get easy, much easier than that, can you? All right, then. What do you say we do some practice? I'm going to give you some equations. I want you to classify them. I want you to balance them. If there are no products, I want you to predict the products. And then class I want you to class
classify, predict the products, and then balance. Okay, now remember, it's important to know you've got to balance the formulas before you try to balance an equation. Okay? Balance the formulas before you try to balance the equation. Mm -hmm. Okay. see how far we can get in this class. Okay? You don't have to do them all, but I want you to spend the remainder of the class period working on this. Alright, got a couple more things I want to cover with. They gave you a chance to practice a little bit. Uh, I want you to work on some more of these at home. If you're not comfortable with them, comfortable enough to be able to do these without help, you need to practice some more, okay? And I'm going to give you a chance to be mature. You can decide whether, you know, you're adult enough to figure out what you need. We're going to have a test on Thursday. You know what you need. There is a practice test on the, on the website, always has been, okay? You can go to that practice test and do that. You can do some more practice with these problems I put up on here if you want it. If you need me to email it to you, I can do that, okay? Um, but you need to practice, all right? That's the only way you get good at this. But a couple things to point out to you. Um, there was a reaction listed there for you. We had sodium, which is a metal, so we're going to list it as a solid, and it put, they put water, or water was put, it, put in there, and water is going to be a liquid. So the question is, will sodium displace hydrogen in water? Now, we know that these, single, these metals will replace hydrogen in an acid, but if you read what's over here, it says that all these metals above my hand, all these right here will not only replace uh, hydrogen from a regular acid that we talked about in the previous unit, it will also replace hydrogen in um, acids to form hydrogen gas. Let's see. Now, all these will replace hydrogen, hydrogen in an acid. They will replace hydrogen in steam, but these up here will also replace hydrogen in water. So water, in a case like this, acts like an acid. Now we said that water is generally treated like it's not an acid, but sometimes it is an acid given the right conditions. And if you have something as active as sodium, it'll kick out the hydrogen gas just like it would with an acid. So all those alkali metals and alkaline earth metals that are up here on the top, not all, not all those in those classes are up there, but those that are here, those will kick out hydrogen in water and create hydrogen gas. It'll actually create an explosion which is pretty cool. Anyway, so sodium replaces the hydrogen. So sodium then joins up with the oxygen, and we get H2 gas. Okay, anytime you kick out hydrogen, it forms a gas. Okay? All right, if you kick it out, it becomes by itself. All right? Now, we need to know the physical state of sodium oxide. It says oxides are all insoluble, except when they're joined with group 1. Oh, what is sodium? It is group one, so this is going to be aqueous. So, um, Justin, I told you the wrong thing here. Okay? On, this is oxides are soluble, except group one, and sodium is group one. Okay? I know, and I had to go look it up. All right? Sodium oxide is reasonably stable, but not enough to keep it, you know, it's going to actually be, it's still going to become a solution. All right. So that's that. Now let's talk about something called, um, Net ionic equations. This one, this one right here. Oh, I you have to balance it. I just didn't do it because we've been balancing for a while. You can do that on your own. All right, net ionic equations. N E T ionic. I know I wrote kind of poorly here. Ionic equations. Okay, net ionic equations. Well, before you can figure out a net ionic equation, you got to figure out the complete ionic equation. Okay? Before you can figure out a net ionic equation, you've got to figure out a, the complete ionic equation. Go back to the list of equations we have here. See if I can find one that's uh, pretty easy to work with. All right, so there's only two kinds of equations for which there are net ionic equations. Only two kinds. Only two classifications. And those are single replacement and double replacement reactions. Okay? 
Only single replacement and double replacement reactions have net ionic equations. All right. So I'm looking here, and this looks like the first one that would be um, a double replacement reaction. Does that make sense? I didn't predict products here. Let's go down here. Here's a double replacement reaction right here. All right, we'll use that one down there. All right, so let's write that one down. If you haven't gotten to that one, write it down now. What did you put as the title? Net ionic equations is what I put down as a title. Uh oh, I just realized that's not proper. That formula right there is not properly balanced. That should be ALOH, and there's a subscript three right there. There would be no no reason to put that in parentheses. That OH unless there was a subscript three right there. Okay. All right. So back to looking at uh, what I've written down. Here's what I've written down: HBr, ALOH, subscript three, and a solid. So what kind of uh, classification of a reaction do we have here? What's the classification of reaction? Double, double, double replacement, but it's also something else. It's got hydrogen in the front here, hydroxide in the back here, acid, acid base. Okay, we're going to form water and a salt. So the hydrogen is going to go with the OH. We get water. We're going to get aluminum with bromine. Okay, now I'm not going to carry over subscripts unless they're part of a polyatomic ion. This three is not part of the polyatomic ion. The polyatomic ion is inside the parentheses. All right. Now I need to balance the formulas. So what is the physical state? Uh, well, what's, what, what is the charge on an aluminum ion? What is the charge on an aluminum ion? Three. Three plus. What's the charge on a bromine? Single negative. So what formula do I need to write here for aluminum bromide? If this is 3 plus and that's 1 negative, ALBR sub 3. Okay, there's the formula balance. And what physical state do we assign to water? Liquid, unless there's some heat around. There's not, heat in the, not enough heat in this kind of reaction. Okay, and what physical state are we going to assign to aluminum bromide? Huh? Solid? Really? Tell me how you got it. Aluminum, bromine. Aluminum and bromide. What's the physical state? We got water around. It, yeah, it says it's sol bromides are soluble, except when they're combined with silver, lead, or mercury. Aluminum is not silver, lead, or mercury. So that's soluble. If there's water around, what physical state is it going to have? Aqueous. Aqueous. Okay. All right. So we have a driving force because we're forming water. That's one of our driving forces. Formation of a solid, formation of water, or formation of a gas. Those are our driving forces for a double replacement reaction. Classification, double replacement. But it's not just double replacement. It's also acid base. Okay? If you have this kind of reaction, you've got to say it's both. Now, when we learned to balance formulas, we did so using the two charged particles. A while ago, when we were talking about how do we balance this, we did it by saying that aluminum had a 3 plus charge and bromine had a 1 negative charge. Writing ionic equations is undoing what you've already learned to do. That's all it is. Undoing what you already learned to do. So we're going to write a now, I haven't balanced this, this equation yet. We need to do that. Um, just for time, I'm going to balance it by inspection. You need to learn to balance these you know, on your own without having to do it by inspection, okay? So I know I'm going to need three of these, and I'm going to need three of these. That would fix it, would it not? I believe so, okay? So if you did the atom inventory, which is required in this class, you have to do an atom inventory, that's what you're going to come up with. But I'm skipping that just for time, and also so I can write my, my complete ionic equation right under this. Okay? All right. So this is an aqueous compound. If it's an aqueous compound, and it's either an acid or it's ionic, we can split it up. That's the only kind of time, that's the only time you can break it up. You break it up if it's an acid or ionic compound. And 
and it's aqueous. It's got to be both. Okay? So would this split up? It's an ionic compound. It's not aqueous, so it's not going to split up. Would this split up? <coughs> no, it's not a, It's not aqueous. Okay, how about this one? Yeah. That one split up. Okay, so we're going to split up this one and this one, and the other two, we're going to leave them just the way they are. Okay? So we've got H and Br. Now, when we split them up, we split them up into, into, split them up into their ionic form. So what charge do we assign to hydrogen? Um, two. Oh, no. One plus. What charge do we assign to bromine? Bromide, one negative. Okay, and since the compound is aqueous, those ions are are aqueous. They're dissolved in water, and in water, that's what they actually are. In that aqueous form, they're actually dissolved in water, so they actually separate. So we'll write them as aqueous. And I really didn't leave myself enough room here because I've got to show how many there are. How many hydrogens do we have? Three of them. How many bromines do I have? three of them, because that coefficient three in front means there's three of both of those, okay? All right. Now, this one we're going to leave alone. We're not going to split it up, he said, because it's solid. And over here, we're not going to split that one up. But this one we're going to split up. What are you going to split it up into? Huh? AL and BR. What charge do we assign to AL? Huh? Three plus. That's what we gave it before. When we, when we balance the formula, what charge do we give to the bromine? One negative. If this is aqueous, then these ions are aqueous. Okay? So that's a complete ionic equation. That's it. Okay, that's a complete. That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay. Because we're we're going to write a we're going to get to eventually a net ionic equation. We're not quite there yet. Okay. Now for a net ionic equation, think about it like this. This is like a sporting event. Okay. There are those who are in the game, and those who are on the bench. Okay. This is like a sporting event. There are those that are in the game, and those that are on the bench. Those that are on the bench are spectators because they're not in the game, right? Are any, is anything in here that doesn't change? Oh, I didn't put three in front of bromine over here on this right side. i got to put that three right there. Show three bromines. What in this equation is not changing? Bromine is not changing. Everything else is changing, isn't it? Aluminum is three plus over here, but here it's not. It's bound up with the hydroxide. The only thing that's not changing is bromine. Bromine's on the bench. We're going to get rid of the bench sitters because what we want are the people that are in the game or the ions or, or species that are in the game. Okay? So we're going to write 3H plus aqueous. We're going to leave out bromine because it's a bench sitter. Okay? We're going to include aluminum hydroxide. We're going to include the water. And we're going to include the aluminum ion over here. Okay? We got, we, we, we're just writing out the people that are in the game. This is a net ionic equation. So this is a complete ionic equation. This is a net ionic equation. Okay? Does that make sense? So you're not really learn, learning anything really new you're just writing it down a different way okay any questions about that now remember what are the kinds of equations for which you can write net and complete ionic equations double replacement and single replacement that's it no other kinds of equations are going to form there are there are some exceptions but for us we'll just go with double replacement single replacement okay any questions about that all right then. Yes. Do it again. I just looked and found in this equation the only things that are staying the same is this bromine. 
I got three bromines, negative charge aqueous, three bromines, negative charge aqueous on both sides. Okay? That makes sense? They're exactly the same. So they're not changing. They're not doing anything. So they're on the bench. Because if you're in the game, you've got to be doing stuff. Right? I mean, not since my kids were like, you know, in, in really young baseball did they not do anything because they're in the right field and they tend to play with the grass and pick flowers and things instead of actually play baseball. Okay? Right? If you're in the game, you're doing something. You're supposed to be. Right? He, they were supposed to be doing something. But, you know, it gets kind of boring in right field when you're that young. Y'all don't know that, do you? Huh? Yeah, all right. So, if you're in the game at high school, in high school, you're doing something. Yes? Okay, so everything that's doing something, they're in the game, we're going to keep it. Everything that's not uh, in the game, we're going to take it out. Okay? You get a penalty if you have somebody in the game that's not supposed to be there, right? So this is a net ionic equation. This is a complete ionic equation. What? All right, let's go back to that list we had a while ago. Let's pick up a couple of equations for you to write a complete and net ionic equation for. Just two. We'll pick two. All right. How about numbers, uh, let's see, 32 and 34 on this list. 32 and 34 on this list. Okay, 32 and 34. That's your homework. 32 and 34. Okay. 32 and 34. Those are the ones you're going to write. You're going to balance the equation. You're going to predict the product. We do all the things you're supposed to do. Plus, I want you to do as homework, uh, net and complete, uh, complete and then net on an equation. Everybody got that? Yeah, do everything you're supposed to do and then write the other kinds of equations. 32, here's 32 right here. Whoops, wrong. 32 and 34. Okay, those are the ones you're going to do for homework just so you get a chance to practice with net and complete on your question. Uh, you need to write it down because that's how you figure out the physical state. The question was, do you have to write down in water? Well, if you don't write down in water, how are you going to know the compounds that are going to be aqueous or not? I mean, ionic compounds, if they're aqueous, have to be written as aqueous. If you don't have in water written down there, you don't know whether to decide whether they're going to be solid or aqueous. Because an ionic compound without water, regardless of uh, anything else, is going to be a solid. Ionic compounds are form, form, form solids. I don't know any ionic compounds off the top of my head that make, do anything but form solids. Okay? Any questions? All right, then. And then tomorrow's a review day. So make sure you go through your notes. If you want to go in, on the... A website and find the practice test, you know, bring those questions in, all right? Any questions you're not sure of, don't ask me to do every question on the practice test. We really don't have time for that, okay? Just make sure you go through that. And anything you're not solid on, that's what you want to ask me about. If you want to just go through your notes and ask me questions to, to solve things or do things with you that you're not solid on, do it that way. You choose the best way for you to review, but you've got to be adult, mature enough to make those decisions, okay? If you want to be a third grader, then you'll get a third grader's grade.